Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna try the weekly vlog again. I really enjoyed it, and I thought I got to talk a lot more about the books and really, really dig into them and how to describe them. So, as I start off, I am going to talk briefly about the TBR that I have for this video for this week, and I'm setting it a little bit higher than what I was able to get through last week, but these are shorter. I did have two lengthy young adult novels on my list last week. This week they are all middle grades, the first of which I am reading on my Kindle, and that is Beasts and Beauty. That is one of the 20 books that is actually a finalist. Hopefully, I'll be able to finish that one and Tunnel of Bones today. Tunnel of Bones is the second in the V.E. Schwab Middle Grades series. I really enjoyed the first in the series. That is the last book that I read in last week's vlog. In this story, she travels from Scotland to Paris. So I'm excited to see how it expands on the world and how Cass comes to grips with, or doesn't, I don't know, I haven't read the book yet, her new found role as a ghost hunter. The other two books, other three books that I tentatively am going to try to read this week, it is the third book in that series. This is the book that is on the Goodreads Choice Award list. However, I don't think that I'm going to get this finished before voting in the final round ends because that ends today, which is Sunday. Um, so I do plan to hopefully get to this starting on Monday. If I read a lot today, I may get to this today. If not, that's going to be a, like a Monday, Tuesday read for me. The next book that I have on my TBR for this vlog is Red, White, and Whole. Uh, in this book, the main character is Indian American, and she it's, it's both an immigrant story as well as the fact that she finds out that her grandmother, her ama, is very sick, and she wants to do whatever she can to save her, even though she gets queasy at the sight of blood. So the title is both a play on red, white, and blue, uh, but also, like, blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, etc. I'm actually really excited about this one. Then lastly, one that I'm probably the least excited about, but I am going to read because it is on the list, is Best Nerds Forever by James Patterson. This one did not make the finalist list, which I am a little bit surprised about because usually these lists are popularity contests and James Patterson is a name that people know, but perhaps more people associate with him with his adult works. So that's where things stand uh, for this reading vlog. I'm really excited about the five books that I'm going to try to get through this week and the updates that I am going to try to bring. These vlogs might just be extended reading discussions and in that case I'm really excited about it. So instead of a December TBR, I'm just going to show this right here because this basically is my December TBR. The books in the middle column, the three there, those are middle grade books from the Goodreads Choice Awards, uh, aside from the ones I just talked about. And then the taller column, those are the young adult fantasy books. There are, I believe, two or three that are ebook only from my library, but there's my December TBR. So it's Sunday night and I just finished reading Beasts and Beauty. So Beasts and Beauty is, is um, a compilation of 12 retellings of fairy tales, fairly common fairy tales, Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty, Peter Pan, things like that. At one point I thought I actually might DNF the book, but then I thought I'm reading through it quick enough that I'll finish it. This book probably I will rank at the bottom of the books on the Goodreads Choice Awards list. And huh, of course it's one that's made it to the final round. Some of the retellings 
I found really intriguing. I liked the different take on the fairy tale that the author had. Some of them I found incredibly strange. At least one or two of them, I can't remember which ones exactly. It got to the end and I went, wait, it's done? That makes no sense. That, I don't, I don't get that. They weren't all bad. I, I liked some. Some of them were definitely not middle grades. Like even if the whole collection had been one that I liked and appreciated, there's no way I would put it on a shelf in a middle school classroom, no way. So not only did I not really like it that much, but I think it's grossly miscategorized. I just lit my candles. Loving candles. That's the only nice thing about it getting dark early, way too early. Like it's only 6.30 and it's pitch black outside. So I lit my candles. I have my Christmas tree on. I'm going to read Tunnel of Bones and hopefully I'll be able to finish that tonight. We'll see how that one goes. I indeed finished Tunnel of Bones. I like this one even more than City of Ghosts. Even though it didn't have the appeal of Scotland like City of Ghosts did, I still, still think that Victoria Schwab did an amazing job with this story and building out the world. I, I think that she's really getting into that question that Laura raised in the first book of what exactly is Jacob and what is happening to Jacob. And in this book, uh, Schwab, she does character development for a ghost, for a character who's dead. And I found that fascinating. Now, granted, I would love to know a little bit more about the parents. Not that they're okay with all of the times that Cassidy ends up going off in, into the veil and ending up in these weird places. I don't know. The parents just seem a little bit like adults in the Charlie Brown cartoon. But I think that Cassidy is also a very compelling character as she searches for the, the reason that she didn't die. The reason that Jacob saved her in the first place and the reason that she is who she is. I did notice one thing that I'm intrigued about because Laura keeps saying that Jacob is growing stronger. And you see aspects in this book where Jacob is growing stronger. And one of those is that he saves Cassidy from uh, an accident, a, a, a bit of mayhem that the poltergeist is causing. Cassidy is really taken aback by this. But at the same time, I'm thinking Jacob saved her from the river. So somehow this ghost was able to manipulate actual matter to save her from the river in the first place. So is he actually going, growing stronger? And I wonder if Victoria Schwab will explain that in the third book, in which case there's a lot of good stuff to come. Okay, so I thought I would film this update and a little bit of a haul in front of the Christmas tree. So I did start Bridge of Souls last night got about 20, 30 pages into it, not a ton. So I won't give a reading update on that. What I wanted to update on was a little bit of a haul that I have done. So I'm working through purchasing all of the books that I've ever rated five stars. And I'm actually, thanks to some money that I didn't quite expect earlier this year, I'm getting close to the end of that. And that just means I need to read more books and find more five star reads. So in no particular order, I have Translating Childhoods, Immigrant Youth, Language and Culture. This is a book that I haven't read yet, but one that I work on as part of getting better in my profession as an educator and someone with a passion for bilingual education. I have roughly grouped them. So the next three that I have are children's books. This one I have done, this has been part of a wrap up, part of my reading this year. I talked about how excellent this is back then. Then I have Black Potatoes by Susan Campbell Bartoletti. 
This is an award winner. I forget which award, but it was one of the reasons that I picked this up. This is the story of the Irish potato famine. It's definitely one I'm looking towards what sorts of really good middle grades and younger targeted historical works of nonfiction that I can add to my library as well because as a social studies teacher I want them to know about these things too. And the last one I read it a long time ago a while ago I did not realize that it was a picture book so it is the only picture book I have in my collection. I really enjoyed it but realizing that it's a picture book once it arrived or remembering that it was I might actually unhaul it and let someone else get some use out of it because it's not much good in a middle school classroom and that is Of Thee I Sing A Letter to My Daughters by former President Barack Obama. It's really good. The illustrations are lovely. I just don't have a lot of picture books. Well, any picture books except for this one. Next, I have a book that I read recently, read in November. I tell you, when they're five stars, I put them on my list and sometimes I get them the next month. So this is The Queen of Water and I'll refer back to those other videos for a description of this. I did make another exception to my I purchase books only once I've read them because I think I'll love them because I loved the first one in the series and I needed to get the other one back to the library and that is the second and third books in The Wheel of Time. I also love this edition of it. I'm not a huge fan of the older artwork. It's just it's not my favorite and honestly it's a little bit of a turnoff but not the book itself. So I have The Great Hunt and The Dragon Reborn. These have both been printed since the adaptation which I have yet to see or watch because it does have the printed on sticker soon to be an original series which is why I don't like the printed on stickers. The rest of them that I have read and these are working towards building out collections of five star reads and that is the Infernal Devices series. I have books one through three. I have loved the um, the Infernal Devices series, the historical part of Cassandra Clare's works. The fact that they just keep going and going and going, I'm like, have you told all the stories by now? But I really did love the historical part of this. So I have Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. I haven't read those for a while, so I don't know if my remembering of them is as would be as fond. But I really enjoy them and I know that my students would enjoy them as well. Shadowhunters, that's the word I wanted. Speaking of a series that I loved, oh, I absolutely loved, adored this series. And that might be just because it was one of my first in the human fae young adult romance type adventure stories. And that is the Iron Fae series by Julie Kagawa. And I have the four books in the Iron Fae series. I have the Iron King, Iron Daughter, Iron Queen, and Iron Knight. So in this series, uh, starting with Iron uh, King. Okay, so it turns out, so she lived her whole life in the regular world. But it turns out that she is the daughter of a mythical fa fairy king. And so she is now Fae royalty and she there's like she's half Fae something like that and she has to get used to that when she travels back. There's also I believe it's Puck but he feels like a Cheshire Cat character also like Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream. There's lots of allusions to A Midsummer Night's Dream in this series. This series it chronicles that story with Meg as the primary character in Iron King, Iron Daughter, and Iron Queen. Now Iron Knight is actually the story of her brother, her younger brother who gets left behind when she goes back into the fairy world. Then I have Rene Adier's The Wrath and the Dawn. This is a Thousand and One Nights Scheherazade retelling. I remember absolutely loving this book, but I would really love to go back and reread it and pick up on some of the details because the cover intrigues me. It doesn't bring back a lot of memories and I don't have the clearest memories of reading this book. I just know that I really enjoyed it. 
And the last book that I have in this little mini haul is Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad. This is a masterpiece. I didn't read this for a while. I'd heard it talked about and because I, for a long time, I was not necessarily a huge fan of magical realism. I had to read a lot of that for uh, undergrad, for my minor in Spanish, it, because that's big with Gabriel Garcia Marquez and etc. And it just wasn't my cup of tea. And I heard a lot of things that alluded to that and, and things like that with the Underground Railroad, but I finally decided to give it a chance. Wow. So in the Underground Railroad, the Underground Railroad is an actual railroad. And so there's a whole lot of other things that take different forms, like real things that become almost fictionalized and fictional things that become real. The way that Colson Whitehead explores the true history through this, through this medium by making the Underground Railroad a real railroad and so much more, it just, it packs such a punch. I absolutely love it and I really, really need to get onto reading his other books. One other quick update. So I do have to switch up my TBR just a little bit because when I got a notification that some of my books were coming due, I renewed them, but this one didn't renew because there's a hold on it. So it's due in two days. So after I finish Bridge of Souls, I will be reading this one next. This is Lost in the Neverwoods. It is a, it is a Peter Pan retelling, only it's set in the Pacific Northwest. I've heard mixed things about it, so we'll see what I think about it once I start reading it. It is Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yes, <laughs> it's Tuesday. A quick update. I did finish Bridge of Souls last night. Now, I wish that I could say like super, super good things about Bridge of Souls. The thing is, I didn't think it was bad. And I want more because V.E. Schwab has said this is the finale of the series for now, which definitely leaves the door open for future books. And I see how she wrapped things up, but still left the door open in a satisfying way. I think part of what went into my not five star rating for this is the fact that I just decided to stay up and finish it however long it took. I didn't even look at my watch before I went to bed. And so I was falling asleep at a couple points. So I know that does factor in. That being said, I, I enjoyed it. I think a little piece was missing from this book in that though the first two had some sort of obstacle related to like some sort of ghost of some sort. You had the Raven in Red in City of uh, Ghosts. You had the Poltergeist in Tunnel of Bones. And in this one, you had the Emissary of Death, but it wasn't something, it wasn't, it didn't follow the setup that B.E. Schwab had used with the first two books where Cassidy stumbled into something, did something the wrong way, woke something up, had to solve the problem. In this case, it was sort of like things from her past, from the previous two books were catching up with her because B.E. Schwab does introduced the emissary, although by not by name, at the end of Tunnel of Bones. That raised the stakes a little bit, but I think took away from some of the good things that had been added to the series. Now, I did enjoy it. I thought there was excellent character development. The things that left me unsatisfied, unsatisfied besides that were twofold. Number one, that whole connection with Cassidy is never explained in all three books, which I guess if E. Schwab comes back to the book, she would explain. And then it changes, I'm not gonna say how, but it changes in Bridge of Souls. And then also the Bridge of Souls itself, that place that is described and it's where the pinnacle of the plot happens, I just could not picture it. Obviously it's in the veil, but I still couldn't picture it based on V.E. Schwab's descriptions. This, it wasn't a bad thing, I think, it was decently done. I just, it, it didn't surpass a four star for me. It was really good. I really enjoy the series. I really want to read more V.E. Schwab books. 
this there were a couple things keeping it from being a five star read for me. I love how I said this was going to be a quick update and then I just keep talking about the book because I enjoyed it so much. I love having the Christmas tree in the background. I love the Christmas season and my mom came over earlier when we were doing some strength training and I pointed out those books over there. Those uh, three stacks of books. You can't even see one of the stacks. Those are all of the books from the Goodreads middle grades and young adult. I know it's done and it's going to be announced on Thursday, but I still want to read all of them. And because I've added the series in, ooh. but anyway, I asked her, Hey, do you think I can finish all of these before 2022? I don't know because there's some chonkers on there, but I'm going to give it a try. Okay. So we have reached the halfway point, uh, in the week. I just got out of the shower. I shower in the evenings because I work out in the evenings. I am just going to quickly update. I don't have a lot of like life stuff that you see me doing during the vlog because obviously I wouldn't take my camera to school. And when I get home, and my life is really not that interesting. I could vlog my puzzles that I've got down here. Lots of cool puzzles. Anyway, that's beside the point. I have started lost in the Neverwoods, and I am exactly 100 pages in my thoughts at the beginning. I don't think this is going to be a top of my list read still going to give it a shot. It is a Peter Pan retelling from the cover. When I was initially sorting my books back there, I put this in the middle grades section. That's what this cover looks like. Uh, and then I went back and looked at the list and went, Oh, this is, YA because the main character Wendy is 18. It starts on her 18th birthday. This does not look like the cover for the book that I'm reading. I, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but this gives a more whimsical, fantastical vibe. And what I'm getting from the first 100 pages is more contemporary thriller with a little bit of fantasy tie-ins. I can tell, I can see how some people would be put off by that. At this point, it's still kind of, eh. I don't think I'll finish it today because the print is a lot smaller than I expected and it's 400 pages. So it's going to take me a little bit longer to read. It probably, I probably will turn it in a day or two late. We'll see if I continue to be disappointed or not. Okay. I just wanted to hop on real quick. I decided to see, cause I thought for some reason that Goodreads Choice Award was going to come out tomorrow, Thursday, but I decided to hop on real quick and see who the winners are. I'm so angry. Now I, I predicted this, but I'm still ticked off because Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan won. So angry. Now it was by only a few hundred votes. But my frustration with that, I'll just mention briefly, that's not one of the books that I'm going to be reading, even though I'm reading through all of the Goodreads Choice Awards. And it's not because I have something against Rick Riordan. I love the Percy Jackson series and all that stuff. The plain thing is my library doesn't have it. And what that means to me is that the people voting for this book, number one, voted for it for popularity because they recognize the name. And number two, they could afford to purchase the book period. Okay. Just wanted to hop on real quickly. I'm angry and I wanted to talk about it. Okay. So popping in real quick because I haven't read that much more of lost in the Neverwoods. I've read about a hundred pages more. I hope to finish it tonight cause I'm going to spend a little bit longer on it. And at this point I think it was due to debt. So if I get it in tomorrow, might not have a library fine. It's interesting that Yesterday I made the observation that it felt more mature than the cover made it to be. And then the second 200 pages, we take a step back in maturity and it feels like a younger YA novel than the first hundred pages, which felt weird. Obviously like the whole, there's the whole Peter Pan retelling aspect. There's Peter coming in, there's his shadow. There's supposed to be some scary stuff. I think maybe this is supposed to be a thriller. I'm also not loving the other characters because they seem very flat. Like her best friend character doesn't actually seem like that much of a friend, just somebody who tolerates her. We'll see how the second half of the book 
goes, if it gets any better, if I go, mm, okay. Okay, so we have gotten to Friday. I've actually read more this week than on a typical week. So last night I did finish Lost in the Neverwoods. I thought I would do this update without this book because I planned to return it today because it was due yesterday. And then I got home and realized, looked over at my seat, saw this book and went, oh, I turned the regular way instead of going left to go to the library. By the end of the book, I it redeemed itself a little bit, well, a lot bit, with the ending. And I think I will rate this book uh, like a 3.75 or a 3.5. So it's better than average. I still stand by some of my criticisms that I've said before about this book, about some flat characters, about some it not matching the cover. Now, I know that's not Aiden Thomas's fault. The end of this book really was action paced, moved super quickly. It captured all of those intrigue and excitement vibes, like, like really getting into the depths of the characters. The whole time I read this book, I was quite suspicious of Peter and the, and the twist at the end and the explanation of the magic and Peter's origin, I just don't buy, which is why this book did not get up to four stars. One of the reasons, but I still loved the end, loved the final rev revelation of Wendy's memories and how she put it all together. At one point I gasped out loud because I thought the reveal was one thing. It wasn't quite that thing, but it was close. Not a bad book, not a great book, but slightly above average. I also last night started Red, White, and Whole. And I did not realize this until opening the book, but it is written in verse. It would be a disservice to Rajani LaRocca to compare her verse to Jason Reynolds and Elizabeth Acevedo. She is not in that style. Jason Reynolds, Elizabeth Acevedo especially, that is their primary expression, their primary way of expression. I don't think based on what I read a, a little bit in the acknowledgements at the end that Rajani LaRocca is a poet first, but she does, from what I've read so far, there have been some really powerful lines that she put in the book. I know I will finish this tonight and I'll be getting into Best Nerds Forever and I hopefully will be able to also pick up Flipped. So that will mean that I have only three more books left on the middle grades list that I have. I am going to end this update here. I'm going to go do one of my advent puzzles. They are really fun. I'm really enjoying them. Hopefully some good reading in store for the weekend. Okay, so it is now Saturday afternoon, last day of this weekly vlog. And I know you couldn't tell because I'm in the same spot almost all the time now, and I'm wearing the same sweatshirt, but it's just one of those really comfy sweatshirts and when you want to relax, especially on a, I don't know if you can tell, a very rainy, blah Saturday, you just wanna be comfy. So I just showered after my run, which was later today, than normal, put on my comfy sweatshirt, and I wanna talk a little bit about the books that I have read. So I was able to really quickly finish Red, White, and Whole. I think this was a, a sweet read, a quick read. I loved the somewhat autobiographical elements that LaRocca included, that which she mentions in the author's note. I didn't think this was, a bad book or a super amazing good book. It was just a sweet, quick read, especially since it's written in first, and I stand by what I said about that yesterday. The next book that I picked up last night was Best Nerds Forever, and interestingly, before I picked this up, I was watching a video by Jess Owens. It was an older video from 2020, her, one of her community videos where she's talking about the, um, about James Patterson's imprints. I didn't even know he had one of those and how he folded it basically left a lot of the authors on the imprint hanging and then said, oh no, it's not actually closing, but we're just gonna print only my books. 
Okay, uh, talk about some white male privilege there. I thought this was a very blah book. Not much really happens. I could tell that there was going to be a little bit of ghost aspects going on. The whole how the ghost stuff worked was very, very, un not unsettling, but undetermined. And whatever Finn decided he could do as a ghost, oh, look, I can do it. It wasn't bad, but then again, it was really average, didn't tell anything new. And then that epilogue, it's like, I'll say this, spoilers for anyone who wants to read it, it's very Wizard of Oz ending. I'll leave that at that. This is probably one of my least favorite reads on the long list, and it took me longer to read than I really wanted to. Next, we get to a book that I wasn't sure about. I noticed that it was one of the shortlisted books, and just nothing in this screamed out to me. But then I started reading it and I noticed, okay, this book, this is the second book in verse. So I read it very quickly, but I couldn't put it down. I absolutely loved it. And I thought, okay, this is a really good book. I see now why it made the list and I see now why it made the final round. The main character in this book, Ellie, she's overweight. She's been overweight her whole life and she is the only one in her family that is overweight. At the outset of the book, she's dealing with starting middle school and the fact that her best friend, who's also, who's also overweight, her best friend's her parents split up, are divorcing, and her mom can't stand living in the same state, and so they move. And so she's losing someone who understood and could empathize, and she's still having to deal with all like a new school and all of these things going on. And her, the way her mother treats her is abhorrent. Her mother is so focused on fixing Ellie's weight problem, as she puts it. And she never really sees her as a person and only begins to towards the end. Her father, I love her dad. Absolutely love her dad. He's very supportive. He's supportive more as the book goes along and as Ellie learns how to stand up for herself, it's almost like that gives him courage to speak against what his wife has been doing. Now that does cause friction between the two of them. But the thing that I love the most is the father actually advocates for Ellie to go to a therapist. And of course, Ellie at first is very apprehensive about going to talk to this therapist, but I love this therapist too. And I love the scenes that Ellie depicts uh, with the therapist. And the fact that Ellie actually grows so much and is able to finally stand up to her mother and say, you've got to stop. You have got to stop this way that you're treating me because you are not loving me by doing this. She's 12 and she does it in a very 12 year old way, but she's able to do it because of how the therapist has equipped her to do it. And I think that that sort of representation of, of therapy as this good thing, as not the, oh, I want to fix you thing. I loved that. The verse in this book is so good, so powerful, so well done. And this is a debut novel. So I'm really excited to pick up more books by Lisa Phipps in the future. I thought this was awesome. I finished that before my run. I took a little time, watched a lot of booktube, took a shower, and then I'm going to pick, because I want to read two complete books today to see if this weekend I can finish with all of the middle grades books so that I can make that Goodreads video to go up sometime this coming week. I have two books left of the ones that I was able to get a hold of, which would make three out of the 20 that I haven't read. Uh, but those two are Unplugged by Gordon Corman. I've liked his books before. I've read them. They've been on the SEASL list, so I think that'll be it. And then the other one is Ground Zero by Alan Gratz, and I've read his book before, books before, like Refugee. I love his works. So I know that those books will be decent reads as well. But the next one that I'm going to read, that I hope to read today, is Alone. And I thought that it would take me a little bit longer because it's pretty big. But then I was watching one of uh, Gavin's videos uh, from How to Train Your Gavin, 
where he read the top 10 for the Goodreads uh, Choice Award in middle grades. When he talked about this, he mentioned that it was in verse. And I went, wait, it's in verse? And so I went and I opened it and it, has, it is actually in verse. I'm realizing that I like those, but they're also quicker to read. So I hope to finish this today and then wrap up this vlog either later today or first thing tomorrow morning. And then I think from now on, I'm actually going to start my vlogs on Mondays and use Sunday as sort of like an in-between, a finish up the vlog from the previous week and start the vlog for the next week. Hey, and welcome to the end of the vlog. I am filming this update really quickly. I did finish alone yesterday. I'm not gonna talk much about it. It was an average book for me. There were some, I had some interesting thoughts about it that I had difficulty expressing, but I put in my Goodreads review, so I'll link that in the description. All told, this week I read six books, which is phenomenal, especially for being an active teacher. Now granted, three of those were in verse and middle grade, so that made it a little bit easier, but I'm excited to see how many books I can get read this next week, even though I don't think it'll be six because it's the last week before break, which is chaotic for teachers, especially middle school teachers, but I cannot wait to see what books come my way on my reading journey and hope that you will join me in this and I will see you in the next one.